Yes. 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 I know you did that intro. Fade it down, please. Fade it down. It's not got my own little podcast going on here. Got a musical introduction. Got my producer in the back. Say hello. Yeah. There you go. Now, if he sounds a little bit like me, well, that's just because we grew up in the same neighbourhood. Don't look no more into it. Don't think no more of it. The same conspiracy hour. Although, if it is conspiracies you want, I'm your man for that as well. Just check those videos out. But, formerly Violent Rick, I am Rick David, and I will be your Huckleberry for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Now, any resemblance to a podcast is purely coincidental. But if it does sound like a podcast, and you do like the sound of that, then maybe let me know. We'll see if we can make something happen there. As it stands, this is just a response video. Yeah, you remember them YouTube response videos? It's a response video to my man, to the Sandman, Mr. Sandman Lee. You know what, every time I watch his videos, he claims that he's also known as the Black Azrael. Now, I've never heard this. I've never heard him referred to as that, so I'm going to refer to him as the Black Azrael of the RCWR show. He does a brilliant post-raw show. He does a post-impact show. He does a lot of shows, and you want to check him out, so I'll give you the link. And he did a brilliant video called Daniel Bryan Fans Sad about the reaction to the result of the Elimination Chamber last Sunday. Now, let me first say that I've been a wrestling fan. Well, I'm 28 years old. I've been watching wrestling since I guess I was about four. So that's 24 years of wrestling fandom. And I've got to say that in all of those years, I don't remember anything like this journey that we've all collectively been on with Daniel Bryan and his rise or the rise of the dragon, the American dragon, if you will. Because the emotion that we've all been through, you know, the pain and the tribulations of being with him the whole way and having it yanked away from us and being bait and switched and played around. I mean, there was something similar with Mankind, but, you know, you, you never really got the impression that the company was really, genuinely trying to brush him under the rug like they did with Daniel Bryan. But I've got to say, at the end of the Elimination Chamber, all I was saying, all I was thinking was, finally. That's right, finally. Because did they manage to fool me one more time to reel me in and make me think that Sunday was going to be the night, but Daniel Bryan was going to win the big one, get the job done with no take backs, no reverse decisions. Well, as the Black Azrael would say, for a hot minute, they did have me fooled. But the way Michael Cole reacted to it, the way they cut to the crowd, and the emotion from Michael Cole and the language that he was used, how much more can the fans take uh, about the disappointment? That's what made me say, finally. Because finally, we're actually going to get it. Finally, I'm able to have faith. Faith that I didn't have after uh, the pay-per-views that followed SummerSlam. I mean, SummerSlam itself, yeah, I thought, yeah, as, as most people thought, they're setting him up, him against the machine, and he's going to conquer it. Only that didn't quite happen. And there's a lot of people who at that time were saying, no, this is all part of the master plan. This is all part of the master plan. You know, it's part of the man's genius. And you could be forgiven for thinking that because why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't the wrestling company be setting Brian up for ultimate success? Only that's not what we got, was it? Instead, we got him screwed week after week after week and every pay-per-view ending the same way until they tried to put him into that angle with the wires. And it's at that point that you realise there was no master plan. He wasn't being set up to conquer the WWE. He was there to fill in for John Cena while he was injured, to give him his little spot in the sun just for a while and then to knock him back down to the mid-card. And obviously, or well, I say obviously, I think it's pretty obvious that he would eventually have broken out from the Wyatts and gone back to being a full babyface. But was he gonna, like, was he gonna actually take the championship? Was he gonna be main event in WrestleMania? It certainly didn't look that way. And that is when I and so many of you lost faith. And I think it's understandable that we lost faith because at that point, you know, all of these all of these ideas that don't worry, don't worry, just wait and see where it's going, wait and see where it's going. We saw where it was going. It was going nowhere. But that is when anybody who still had patience or faith, that is when it was rewarded because our support of Daniel Bryan, no matter what all these people were saying, and you know what, there's been some fantastic commentary on this whole saga, including the Off The Ropes show. I'll put a link to that. And uh, if you're a subscriber to the Pro Wrestling Torch, Bruce Mitchell has done some fantastic articles uh, titled Submit about how the WWE machine just wants the fans to eat up whatever they're serving and to like it or to not like it because you've got nowhere else to go anyway. And it was a really doom and gloom, really negative look. And it's saying it doesn't matter how loudly you cheer, they're going to do what they're going to do. And a lot of people firmly believe that. But as it turns out, they weren't quite right, were they? Because all the fan support 
All the noise that these crowds were making, all the people that bought their tickets to go to the house shows and go to the televised shows because they wanted to chant yes with Daniel Bryan. And of course, at the sporting events, when you've got that amazing visual of the entire, I suppose you can say arena, but whatever, the, the entire hall all doing the yes chant, that affected their booking and that made them change their minds, pull him out of the wires and set him on the path that we're on now. Now, at first glance, it may look as though the path that we're on now is the same path that we were on before, before they even diverted with this Wyatt storyline. But it's not, and I'll tell you why. Because now the WWE is fully acknowledging everything that's happening with him. They're fully acknowledging the crowd response, that it is the loudest response for any wrestler on the roster. They actually went as far as saying that, Jerry Lawler did. I mean, he still said, ah, it's up there with him, but he said, I stand corrected, I wear orthopedic shoes. I said that John Cena got the loudest reaction out of anybody, but now I've got to say Daniel Bryan is right up there. That's their way of saying Daniel Bryan is beating him. Not only that, but they've given it the, the corny title, the Yes Movement. And I don't really, well, I don't at all like that. It, to me, it's just corny, it's just cheesy, it's just corporate. But they're getting behind it. And they weren't getting behind it before. See, Daniel Bryan didn't get popular because of their support. It was in spite of their lack of support. You know, you got to remember how this all started in 2012 with a yes chant. He was a heel and they didn't want the, the crowds chanting yes. You know, it's crazy that they, they hit, struck oil, whatever. They captured lightning in the bottle, whatever the cliche is. They got these entire arenas all chanting along with him. But because he was heel and because he wasn't really what they were planning for at that time, they, they wanted it all to stop. They wanted to try to change it. They tried to have AJ Lee come and commandeer the chance so that, you know, now it's associated with her, didn't work. They tried to make out like the people were mocking him. First they did that by the announcer saying it and I wasn't buying it. Even Daniel Bryan wasn't buying it. He was even scripted, I guess, to, to say, you know, these people aren't mocking me. They're chanting it because they love me. Um, of course, they eventually did go in the direction of him going a bit crazy and thinking that the crowd are mocking him. And he went to the no chant, and that was all great. That was all fun. But my point is, they tried to subdue it, whereas now they are fully embracing it. You know, I think they were very smart to have Michael Cole go in that tirade that he went on at the end of a chamber. And note that he hasn't done that at the end of SummerSlam or any of the other pay per views that followed. And no, I can't remember their names, but they're not worth remembering. You know, because they owned it. And when I say own, I don't mean in the internet sense. I mean, they took the fiery passion, the uh, the emotion that the fan was feeling, and they voiced it for us. You talk about CM Punk being the voice of the voiceless. Well, on Sunday, Michael Cole was our voice, the voice of the frustrated fan. And so they're making it the storyline. They're saying, we know how you feel, and we're with you in this. You know, and how much more can you take? You can't take much more, but don't worry because we know that and we're going to deliver. And this is something that we weren't getting before. Now, as for what they're going to deliver, <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. I'm not thinking that he's somehow going to be shoehorned into the main event of WrestleMania 30 and a triple threat. And honestly, I don't think that would be ideal right now because you can tell that that wasn't the plan all along and it would just feel forced and... I don't think that's really becoming of WrestleMania 30. That said, Orton versus Batista, wow. And that was a really good tweet where somebody had a picture of uh, that meme with the, 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 the sudden awakening. Just look it up. Anyway, there's a guy in a dance floor and he's got this expression like something's just blown his mind. And it's that at WrestleMania 30, the main event is going to be of a toilet break. So I don't really know what they want to do as far as the main event, but it's not going to be with Brian. As you can see, it's going to be Brian versus Triple H at WrestleMania. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because he's going to beat Triple H. And uh, this is where your fears might start rising again and thinking that Triple H is going to get his trusty shovel out and he's going to do what he did to Booker T and not come through at WrestleMania. But you know what, this isn't 2003, this ain't WrestleMania 19. Which, by the way, you know they actually have the audacity to go with the slogan, Dare to Dream. Dare to Dream, yeah. You found out what happens when you dare to dream. In 2003, and this is 2014, last time I checked. Look, Triple H, his reputation precedes him, and it's well-deserved. But, I really don't think that now, with him not being an active wrestler, and now, with Daniel Bryan even having more momentum than even Booker T had back then... I really cannot see him, um, you know, burying Daniel Bryan, beating Daniel Bryan. I just, 
All right, even saying that, now I'm starting to worry, but I think that's just that element of doubt that's going to make it a really dramatic event. And I really, really do believe that Brian is going to overcome and he's going to win at WrestleMania and he's going to have his moment. But don't get me wrong, that's not the moment that we're really waiting for. That is a bit of a bump in the road. But I think it's going to be symbolic when he beats Triple H, when he finally... When he actually stands up to the authority and when he actually makes them look like losers, makes them look foolish, because that's what's been missing as well. He's had a few moments on a microphone, but he hasn't really had that satisfying just getting them getting their comeuppance. And I think that's going to happen at WrestleMania. And then, then that's when he's going to be on the path to winning the title because... You know, they've already had their plans made and it's just not going to be the night. It's not going to be WrestleMania, but he's going to be unstoppable after then. And maybe I'm a fool. Maybe I'm naive, but it's going to happen. I can't tell you exactly when. I don't know if it's going to be at the uh, Extreme Rules pay-per-view, but he's going to come through. Don't you worry about it. Okay, final thoughts time. We've all been part of something special something that's going to be fondly remembered and look back on with great reverence in the years to come. Daniel Bryan's rise to popularity has been compared most commonly to Steve Austin, but I think we need to stop doing that and we need to start just looking at it as what it is, as Daniel Bryan's rise, as his unique rise and his unique story. Because honestly, as I said at the start, it's not like anything else that I've seen. It's organic, firstly, but we've had we've had other organic rises, like Steve Austin, but they've been embraced, the company has gone with them. And we've had other organic rises which have been crushed, which have been quelled, and people have been disheartened, but they've, you know, they've sulked and they've complained on the internet, or they've moved on, and nothing's come of it. But this time, this time we're going to get the satisfying conclusion, and that is going to be a victory not just for Daniel Bryan, for the hard-working wrestlers who can overcome all the obstacles put in their way and not being handpicked to be the man, but also for the fans, for the fans who want to make their voice heard and to tell the company, this is what we want. And fans should be proud that they have moved the hand of the company, that they have forced their hand and they are responsible for Daniel Bryan's ultimate victory, as well as him, of course. So don't give up. Don't stop supporting him. Don't stop believing. And uh, don't stop checking out the RCWR show either. So I'll catch you guys later. Much love. Bye bye.